Welcome to this course, Introduction to Cybersecurity Literacy. This is Lesson 22, Wireless Network Basics. In this lesson, I will introduce you to wireless networks. In later lessons, we'll talk about the security risks associated with wireless networks, and I'll suggest some ways in which you can use and administer wireless security networks more securely. But we'll start here with a few brief words on how wireless internet connections work. Wireless internet connections go by several names, Wi-Fi, Wireless Ethernet, and IEEE 802.11a, 802.11b, 802.11g, or 802.11n. For our purposes, all these describe the same thing, the wireless connections that allow your devices to connect with a wireless internet router, and through this router, to communicate with the whole internet. These types of connections are distinct from cellular internet connections, which do not have the same security risks as Wi-Fi connections. In this class, when we talk about wireless networks, we're going to stick to the traffic traveling between a Wi-Fi enabled device, normally a computer, a tablet, or a smartphone, and a wireless internet router. To be clear, the issues we're introducing are relevant to your phone when your phone is on Wi-Fi, but they probably aren't relevant to your phone when you're using your phone's mobile data connection. Operating systems for Wi-Fi enabled devices will have some kind of wireless connection manager program. For example, this illustration shows the wireless connection manager application that runs on the Windows 7 operating system. On the left side of the window, you can see a list of service set identifiers or SSIDs. An SSID is also commonly referred to as the router's name, or the network's name. How does your computer know which wireless routers are in range at a given time? Simple. Wireless routers emit signals that broadcast their SSID. They are constantly advertising their own availability. Over on the right side of the window, we can see the signal strength for each network. Devices on Wi-Fi networks, both routers and computers, work by transmitting information through radio waves. These green bars let users know how strong the radio signal is between the router and the computer. In Windows 7, unsecure wireless networks are marked with a yellow exclamation point icon. Routers and computers have the ability to encrypt their transmissions. An encrypted signal means that, even if somebody intercepts your Wi-Fi traffic, they shouldn't be able to read it. But this yellow icon tells you that transmissions to and from this network will not enjoy such encryption. Let me repeat that. This yellow icon means that the information carried by the radio waves between the computer and the router will not be automatically encrypted. Let's see what happens when a user selects one of the networks from the list. When a user selects an SSID, the application asks whether the user wants to connect to a given network and it reminds the user whether or not the requested network is secure. If a user chooses to connect to an unsecure wireless network, the computer should make the connection automatically. If it's a secure network, then the router will ask for a security key before allowing it to connect. If you are connected to a Wi-Fi network, it's worth remembering that all of the information that travels from your computer to the router and from the router back to your computer is transmitted via radio waves. These radio waves move out in every direction from their source. And they don't stop when they reach their intended destination. They will keep radiating out for a long ways. A wireless eavesdropper does not have to be seated between you and your router to pick up your wireless transmissions. They just need to be within the range of your Wi-Fi radio. And remember, radio waves are easy to intercept. All you need is the right kind of radio and you can detect the waves. How far do Wi-Fi signals travel? Well, they usually go about 100 to 300 feet in every direction, depending on conditions and obstructions. To put that in perspective, here's what a 100-foot broadcast radius looks like compared to a football field. For perspective, here's what a 300-foot broadcast radius looks like. It's worth mentioning that with special equipment, People can sometimes detect Wi-Fi signals from even further away, say about a thousand feet. Remember that radio waves go out in every direction, including up and down. 
So people who are above you in a tall building or below you in a basement may also intercept Wi-Fi signals. Okay, that's all for now. In the next lesson, we'll cover a number of wireless internet security threats that you should be aware of and that you should learn to protect yourself against.